To remove the reaction chamber, we're going to take off these four nuts here in the corners, loosen these fittings, as well as remove this nut for the high voltage lead. Then uh, you just simply lift the reaction chamber out of the unit. You may or may not have to wiggle out this uh, brace as well underneath. Here we have the reaction chamber removed from the system. Before we start taking off the end caps or doing anything to it, we should mark the orientation of these elbow fittings, as it does come into importance later on. After that, we remove the Allen screws from both ends. We're going to start with the bottom end cap, uh, give it a slight twist to break any o-ring connection, and then grab a flathead screwdriver, and we're going to ease this guy off. Use the fins as leverage, and we're going to go around in a circle, working this end cap off. Apply, again, apply even pressure on all sides. And just be gentle. Once it's more or less halfway off, you can just twist and pull it off. The other side is a lot easier. Uh, just go ahead and grip it as best you can and twist it off. All right, out comes the dielectric. The dielectric is attached to the top end cap. Simply grab it and unscrew it to unthread it down here at the base. Once it, frees, once it is free spinning, simply just pull it right off. This was connected with this thread on the interior. Now we've gained access to the end caps, we can go about pulling out the o-rings and cleaning them out. Now these o-rings are a lot harder than our normal ones. Uh, the fact that they're, this interior o-ring is a lot smaller, you're going to need to use a dental pick and hook one edge of it, anchor it with your thumb and twist the pick and try and get that pick between the end cap and the o-ring and then simply just fish it out. Voila. The exterior o-ring is much easier. Just dig it out. Keep in mind that we don't want to damage the Teflon end cap at all in any way. Same thing on the other end. I'm going to go ahead and do the hard part again. We're going to stick the dental pick in there and anchor it with our thumb and sweep around until we fish that o-ring out. Now these end caps are relatively clean, but we're going to go ahead and clean them anyway. Uh, we're going to use denatured alcohol and a wire brush. Clean out any debris that might be in there. Alternatively, if you don't have anything handy, just get a rag of some kind and a flathead screwdriver. Just get it in there as best you can. If it requires it, go ahead and re-Teflon tape the elbow fitting which is easy enough, and then we're going to put in our new O-rings from our maintenance kit. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit in too easily, but we're going to get it over that. And then involves just spreading it out as best we can, and just use a whole lot of finger strength to force it on there. You only have to do it once or so a year per unit, so just use finger strength and get it over with. The larger O-rings are much easier. Repeat that for the other end cap. If it requires it, the cathode can be honed out. Uh, usually you can just shove an alcohol soaked rag through to clear out any debris. We're going to go ahead and show you just honing it out. Uh, usually we'll do this if there's any kind of water damage or just if you have the hone handy. Go ahead and do both ends. We're going to need to push this brush out to gain to re-anchor it to the top end cap. Just grab anything handy. And 
and we're going to attach it to the top end cap. The brush does not need to be cleaned, but do inspect it for any damage along the copper wire in the interior to see if it's been unwound, but it doesn't happen too often. The dielectric glass itself, go back on it. You'll typically fold down the brush with your hand as you feed it back on. Now we're going to reassemble everything. Uh, make sure to wipe down all the areas with alcohol to remove any fingerprints. And we're going to start with the bottom end cap. Go ahead and find your notch from before and stick it on there. The hole should line up neatly. And you just simple downward pressure. And then once everything is on, twist it to where it should line up to be. Uh, just go ahead and put in your Allen screws again and insert it back in the unit.